front of me here, I've got a common tiger snake. These guys are absolute survivalists. They live in a huge range of environments and landscapes. You can find tiger snakes up the east coast, west coast, off islands, off the coast of Australia, Tasmania. They're live bearing, which is an adaptation to living in a cooler climate because then they don't have to worry about eggs incubating over a longer period of time. And the babies come out straight away, ready to go, fully loaded with the same level of toxicity in their venom as this one would have right here. This looks to be an older animal. A uh, little bit sort of weathered looking, but they can get a lot bigger than this guy is here. They can get over six foot potentially, but standard size for, for the Vic locals is sort of around the four, four foot mark. These guys are also really varied in the way that they'll they'll look. Their appearance can change depending on where they're found. Even within certain areas, certain populations, you'll find they look completely different to each other. But this guy's unmistakably a typical tiger snake. Banding all the way down. He's got the big broad head. And you can see when he's not happy, he flares up his neck a little bit and lets me know how big he is, how dangerous he is, and not to get too close. Wow. You can see him flicking out his forked tongue a bit as well. Sensing what's going on, he's trying to figure me out, I'm trying to figure him out. He was just crossing this path, and now he's just locked onto me here. Wow, these guys eat almost everything. Uh, in an area like this, big part of their diet is going to be frogs. Got a creek running behind us. Water skinks, there's southern water skinks all through here. They'll even climb small trees and get the chicks out of birds' nests. They'll eat rats, mice, native mammals, other reptiles. You can find these guys in the desert, pretty much. So they are, as I said, just an absolute beast at surviving. Their best habitat, the one they do, the best in would have to be wetlands. Anywhere with a fair bit of water, heaps of frogs, and it doesn't even have to be too hot. These guys won't even be active on the hotter days. I'd say probably mid to low 20s would be these guys' ideal active temperature where they'll come out and hunt. They've got no ears. So, you know, people tell you to be really loud and talk loudly while you're walking through the long grass and things like that, but he can't hear me. He's got no idea the sounds that are coming out of my mouth. He could potentially feel the vibration if you've got heavy steps, but I mean really, they're just relying off that sense of smell and their eyesight. Very movement orientated. You see, as soon as I get up, he'll get up as well. Very movement orientated. But he doesn't want to have a go. He's not charging at me. He's not chasing me down from the other side of the road, as people say. I can literally just sit down here, enjoy his company, and eventually he'll just slide off back on his way. And that's what you gotta do if you got if you see a snake and you don't wanna bother him. Just take a step back, stand nice and still, and he's not going to do anything. Have a look at that. That is a cracker. Wow. Let's see if I can get him to flare up for you. So that's not aggressive, that's defensive. That's defensive behaviour. We'll see him now. Slither off. Back past my backpack, off into the bush. Tiger snake, how about that?